Hey guys, I'm Jacob. This is the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. I'm out here today to do some bushcrafting with one of my new best little buddies. Say hello to General Patton. Yeah! Oh yeah, mm-hmm, yep. I don't really know what he's doing, but he likes it. All right, come on, buddy. So, what we're doing today is we are going to look and see whether or not the K-Bar Mark II USMC fighting knife makes a good bushcraft knife. There's a lot of ways that we could do that. You know that it can skin stuff. You can find people slicing up their food with it anywhere. So that's all nothing new, but what we're going to do, and I think the quintessential test for anything, is uh, we're going to do a tri-stick. We're going to do a bunch of different notches in a stick. And this replicates a lot of the tasks that you would do while crafting something in the bush, whether you're making a chair, a trap, who knows what? So, let's see whether the venerable Mark II is up to the task. Now, before we get started here, this channel, I have to say, is uh, made possible through sales at my website, which is beachandtactical.com, where I sell premium survival and tactical gear, such as rifle slings, baldric slings, and other stuff, pouches, all custom made to order, everything's made in America by veterans. This channel, also very importantly, uh, is funded through Patreon, through patrons, and actually what's really special about this video is this knife was purchased through uh, generous donations from patrons on Patreon. Um, and also, I am a brand ambassador for Grunt Style. If you're not familiar with them, they make uh, premium uh, Patriot apparel, um, and all of their clothing has a lifetime guarantee to include their shoes. Uh, so even if you get a stain on your shirt or something, ship it back and they'll send you another, another one for free. So it's pretty awesome. And I'll have a 10% discount coupon for that in the description box below. Now, the K-Bar has a long and storied history. Um, if you want to see basic information about the knife or view a little bit about its history, I'll put a link to that in the uh, little thing up above here to the first video I did on this knife. But today what we're going to be doing is bushcraft. Um, and bushcraft to me is about what I'm doing right now. Tip, essentially having an enjoyable time in the bush crafting things. So a lot of people blur the lines between bushcraft and survival. Um, but essentially we're going to take this stick, we're going to pretty it up, we're going to make some notches on it, uh, similar notches to what you would do making a trap or anything else. And we're going to talk about how the knife did throughout the process. Now, this is the second video of the series. For the third video of the series, we're going to test it for survival, which, uh, as defined by this channel, uh, would be a three-day extreme emergency where a knife could potentially have to go above and beyond its typical uses to keep a person alive. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the most important things about a tri-stick is finding a good stick. Uh, this is not a great one for the task, but what you're looking for is really straight grain. So ideally, none of these knots here, straight wood with no knots, 
and of a hardness where you can kind of stick your fingernail into it and dent it a little bit, but not soft or rotten. And what that does, if you find a really good stick, you'll be able to just really mold it very easily into exactly what you want it to be, which is what you want when you're making feather sticks, traps, or anything else. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to strip the bark off of this and pretty it up a little bit. All right, well, it ain't real pretty because I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on making it pretty. Um, I was, I'm not going to lie though, I do get a little bit jealous when I see people start out with their tri-stick and they start with something that just looks perfect. They get it looking just like a beautiful doll that came out of Home Depot or some kind of art expo or something, but uh, I'm not really into that. We just strip the bark off of it. And the first thing that we're going to do with this stick is we're just going to make a simple point. The reason is uh, a lot of tri-sticks often start with a point because it's incredibly useful for a wide variety of things and it's easy to understand. Um, at some point we'll do a video on making a spear and I'll show you how to properly harden that point as well. But for day day we're just going to get started with the point. So, little Patton here has made it his personal mission to make this as difficult as possible. This point, just so that you guys know, is thinner than almost any point you would want for almost any task around the camp, except for making s'mores. So it's somewhere in between a useful point and a s'more point. Um, and I had to make it off to one side a little bit. We've got a very soft core on this particular stick. Now, what you're going to want to do if this is a working point for a spear or anything else, when you're drying it over the fire, because that's what you're doing, you're not burning it, you're drying it. Think of it as a marshmallow. And you can either dig this, stick this under your fire slightly, and let dry in the ash, ideally over a long period of time, or you can roast it over the fire for quite a while. Now when it comes to bushcraft, people are all about names, and trust me, even some of the big name people that you guys are familiar with, when they teach people how to make a spear tip, they teach it to them wrong. You do not want to burn this or char this, you'll make it brittle. You want to dry it, so keep that in mind. What we're going to do next is um, a series of notches. So I'm just going to get started on that, hopefully in a place where little Patton will give me a little bit of peace. Come here, bud. Come here. Yeah, you got something stuck in your face. Spider webs. Apparently, Patton, unbeknownst to me, is a cave goat. Yeah, caves. He loves them. Perfect little adventure man. So, all right. Notches.
So, since I selected um, a stick with a pretty bad core, a little bit worse than I realized at first, I won't be able to do some of the fancy notches that I had in, in mind, but, uh, and as you saw, I did end up breaking my tip off, so essentially once I carved down through that bad core uh, in my stop notch, then I tried to baton it a little bit more, it just popped right off. Um, and you can really tell how bad the core is from where I was squaring this up, but here's what we've got. A very crude stop notch. A hook notch, or like a pot holder notch, and we've got some 90 degree edges. They aren't the prettiest, and uh, I'm not a man to make excuses. They aren't the prettiest. But, and then when I was going to try and do um, a tying notch here, I realized that this whole thing is just cheesy. But, um, the reason that I selected these notches, specifically just simple 90 degree edges and a simple stop notch, is because when it comes down to it with bushcrafting, that's about 90% of what you're going to be doing anyways when it comes to notches. Uh, when it comes to fancy stuff, the sky's the limit and there's a billion different things you can do. But if you're just trying to get something done and to simply make something in the bush, you're probably going to use, you're going to probably use 90 degree edges and square notches. Anyways, so on to thoughts on the knife, because this isn't about the stick. I talked a little bit about the sheath in the last video. It's certainly subpar, but it works. Um... Does this knife make a good bushcraft knife? Well, a good bushcraft knife um, is going to have a really comfortable handle. It's going to be comfortable to use a few different hand positions on. And it's really going to shine when working with wood. I, as a person, so you know where this is coming from, actually like using both choils and having my thumb up high on the blade. You might have noticed in the little clips there, I'm holding the knife like this. I'm able to get the control that I need, and, uh, and it works. With that being said, there are some things that I would do to make this knife a better bushcraft knife, if that was the goal. Um, but I think really what you could get away with is simply grinding off the back guard here, or even bending it forward possibly, and stripping the finish. Um, stripped finishes to me are just so much nicer when you're working with wood. So, with that being said, can the Mark II be used as a bushcraft knife? Absolutely. If you were looking for a bushcraft knife that could also be a combat knife and you really liked kind of the history behind the blade, um, you know, could you buy this for your bushcraft knife? slash kind of all-purpose knife? Sure. Um, you will notice I did do some very light batoning, and uh, people are crazy about that. But at the end of the day, if you're bushcrafting, you're probably going to be doing some light batoning, whether it's kindling or whatever else. It's fine for that. Um, is it a bushcraft knife? No. It's not ideal. Um, the handle... The handle to me kind of feels like it's just designed to stab people. It's weird, you know, I don't know I don't know why exactly that would be, but uh, that's the impression that I get from the blade. Um, but it's fairly versatile, like I said. Taking off that rear guard, you can get into this thing, do some fine work. So, the question was really simple. And, I, it might be a little bit oversimple, guys, because as most of you watching will know, you can use any knife as a bushcraft knife that's got a decent edge and is of decent quality. Um, to be a bushcraft knife is not a very high bar to set, 
Um, now, when you get into your crazy woodworking carving dudes, um, you know, you're going to start looking for more specific things. But for your average bushcrafter dude, going out, having a fun time with the family, making some stuff, just about any knife is going to do you fine. K-Bar Mark II included. Now, how will that play out when we test this knife as a survival knife? That, my friends, I think is going to be a little bit more interesting. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did or didn't, please let me know in the comment section below. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. I like talking to, uh, talking to you guys in the comment section. Um, it's probably my favorite part about YouTube, besides all the D-bags. But, uh, yeah, uh, bottom line, it's uh, certainly a utility knife, and uh, it'll work. Hope you enjoyed, and have a blessed day. Thank you for watching.